Hey folks, Captain Dave here, back in the wolf den. And as promised, I said I was going to, after pouring some slabs, I was going to show you some of my paint jobs. And I've made a few here, as you can see. But I wanted to start off with showing you ones like this. These are the ones the pros made. These are ones different. This is an older mold of a of a slab spoon that was had an indent for eyes. And what they did is you can see it's these aren't perfect by any means, but whoever made them is much more of a pro than me. How they have a top portion here that's a different color. They will see it better on the red. And there's a little indent where the eyes, and somebody put on red eyes, and then a scale pattern decal. So, they're not perfect, but that's the ones the pros have made. Here's a nice little yellow one, a 5 8 So, mine... Of course, didn't look anything like this. Okay, here's a here's one that, like I said, kind of a blem. It turned. It was supposed to be blue and white, but as you can kind of see here, it's just turning out blue with smudgy white. And then uh, guess this one over here was supposed to kind of end up being. A gold but now let's move on to Dave's creations over on this side I made ones like this that were supposed to be all black on this side and then uh, I used a transparent red scale pattern on top of white. Alright, you can see it a little better right here. And then of course the decal here is like falling off and everything. There's supposed black on this side. White with reflective scale pattern. Then I did some kooky ones like this. Ooh, look at that. I call this my tie-dye. That's a tie-dye one right there. Where the paint got all crinkly. And then over here I did sort of a scale pattern with glow-in-the-dark. Here's glow-in-the-dark right here. That's what they are. They're glow-in-the-dark dots. Okay. Oh, look at this one. This one's kind of cool. Because it was black on one side, almost kind of tie-dye on this side with black and yellow. And then I put glow-in-the-dark dots all over it. Uh, here's one. I put green decal on this side. And a strip of glow-in-the-dark there. Uh, look at that. I just had some of this stuff, so I stuck it on there. Some uh, flash. You know, when it really boils down to it, you know, tackle manufacturers are trying to sell you. They're not trying to sell the fish. Right? I don't think the fish really care how pretty it is. It's all about just grabbing their attention. Here's a uh, little one. Let's see if I can get this undone. Here's a little one that I did, sort of an orange-yellow, and then just wrapped some of the green reflective tape around it. So you can do all kinds of stuff, and I don't think it really matters. Look at this one here. I left it just leads looking on that side. This side... 
I put on a scale pattern of foil with the tip of it glowing in the dark. And I'm going to show you some of these glow in the dark ones here because they're pretty cool. Okay, so let's let me make sure these babies charge up here in this bright light. And then I'm going to turn the light off and I'm going to show you. Let's turn the light off and see if they've charged up enough already. Ooh, yes they have. Oh boy, look at that. So, there's glow in the dark. Now, is that going to make the fish bite? I hope so. It's pretty impressive when you look at this, some of this glow in the dark paint. Um, what it can do. But there you go with that quick charge of just this light. Turn the light back on. There you go. Okay, here's the quandary. Does color even matter? Because I've been using a lot of these. Does color really matter that much? Let's talk about the St. John's River. The jetties. You're dropping this down. You're jigging this. Like I said, usually with either a cut bait, a belly strip on the back of here, a piece of fish bites on the back of here, a sh just a piece of shrimp on the back of here, and you're using this, as, I'm using the slabs as a bait scent deploying device to get it down deep, create some flutter and some motion. So when it really gets down to it, I don't even know if any of this matters because it's so it could be so dark down there, you know? Uh, when you're when you're fishing any lure in the St. John's River past I don't know what 10, 10 feet four feet I wish you know I wish I was a diver in the St. John's River and I'd sort of know does any color matter and that's the reason why I made some of these like this black with just some glow dots on it. I actually believe that all this reflective stuff, all this, it doesn't matter. Not around here. It might matter for a guy in his reservoir back home in Indiana where the sunlight is penetrating and he's dropping down 10 feet. Okay. But around here, does any of this really matter? So, is painting them just a waste of time? Could they just be pure lead colored? Do they have to be shiny? Um, plus, you know, I'm taking these because it's deep and I'm attracting the fish to this because I'm putting some scent on here. All right, so... All that's up for grabs. Nobody knows. But one thing that is ultimately cool is this right here. Is this what the fish see? Did the fish see this compared to the glow in the dark? These glow in the darks? I would think that just plain black with these glow in the dark things on it are what the fish are really going to see. And they're going to see well. So, that's the thought I'm going to leave you with. But I told you, I'd paint up some and show you just my little handiwork on making some slabs. Fishing, deep water, swift water, St. John's River and St. John's River Inlet. 365. And a way to take a bait or some scent, get bit, and have fun jigging instead of just sitting there in the deeper water like a bump on a log, just bottom fishing. 
this is the whole idea. Still keep it light tackle. Still keep it fun. All right? So, thanks for watching. And this has been another Jetty Wolf moment. Talking slab spoons.